Function generators like the fleece tree can also be used as LFOs. That's why there's a switch here to go ahead and change it to automatically repeat itself. To hear what's going on, let's put the Moog into drone mode. And there's our repeating modulation shape. I have it hooked to the unipolar output. We can go to the bipolar output, which makes more sense when we're using it as an LFO. Or we can go ahead and use its attenuated output, which is unipolar, but which we can invert here as well. I'm going to stick to bipolar mode for this. You have the same rise and fall times to change the waveform of your LFO, not to mention its period. And the shape controls to go ahead and play with the shape of this. Maybe a little bit of a swoop up here on the rising edge. Or we have a typical envelope shape. We're giving them both log attack and release. Create some more rounding at the top, or we can go the other direction and create just a very short modulation at the top. And again, there's speed controls when we want to use it at this very low rate or at audio rates. Now I'm frequency modulating the cutoff of the filter. And we'll go back to slow. And I'll go back to something more linear now. Now, there are these additional sections down at the bottom of Blade Stray, and they can come in handy for things such as the LFO and VCO modes. For example, the yellow output is automatically routed to this linear slew generator. This can further smooth out your shapes for the yellow channel, or anything that you plug into here. In this case, I can get two shapes out of the same LFO. For example, I can go for a sawtooth sort of modulation shape on the filter, use its routing through the linear slew, which we'll put up in the blue channel here, and have that control something such as the resonance of this filter. Now, when I use the same shape, resonance is going to maximum at the same time the filter is going to maximum and decaying at the same rate. But if I delay, slew the attack of this shape just a little bit, I get a more interesting sound where the resonance only comes in later while the filter is closing. And again, I could slow down how fast resonance is going back to normal as well. So the blue shape is a slewed version of the yellow shape, or again, anything that I plug into this input. Makes Flistry a good utility module. Turn this off for now, just so we don't get so annoyed listening to it. Some other great tricks can be had by combining the yellow and green channels together to create one complex modulation shape. Now you might be thinking, yeah, we've got the end of rise and the end of fall. We can go ahead and cascade these to do two shapes back to back. And I will show those at the end of this video, but there's other sections of Fleece Tree that make this even more interesting. For example, the analog or, or the maximum level between the two sides and this four quadrant multiplier down here. This allows us to combine these two sides in more interesting ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and put both the green side and the yellow side into repeating modes. We'll start with the analog OR. It takes the unipolar output of these two sides and says, let me just take whoever's highest at any given moment. I'll put that into the blue channel. So now we have a more complex shape. This is the phasing between the green and blue sides. Close down the filter. Of 
course I could just use the external mixer to add the two wave shapes together, the max gives us a more interesting wave shape and also makes sure we don't clip at their plus or minus 10 volt limits. So that's one option. But another option is this four quadrant multiplier, these four LEDs down here. It's basically taking the unipolar output of the yellow channel and the bipolar output of the green channel and multiplying them together. So in this default mode, the yellow channel basically becomes a VCA that opens up and closes down on the green channel's output. So I'll go ahead and look at that output over here. I'm going to make the green channel do something fast. Slow down the yellow channel. So now we basically have the fast green channel being faded in and out by the slow yellow channel using this multiplier, which is basically what a VCA does, is multiplies your CV against the audio input going through it. Now the default is to use the unipolar output of the yellow channel. It's going positive voltages only. That's why the green side is going down to zero volts. And we'll go ahead and give it an exponential shape so you can hear it go to no effect, basically. But what a four quadrant multiplier can do is not just multiply in the positive dimension, but also multiply in the negative dimension. So if I was to take the bipolar output of yellow and put it into this other input of this multiplier, it's going to either do a positive multiplication or a negative multiplication of these two waveforms put together. That's hard to explain. Let's actually look at it. So there's my bipolar output on the yellow side. Go into this input of the four quadrant. Basically, it's going to invert the phase of the green side whenever yellow goes negative. It's basically a through zero amplitude modulation. So by using this multiplier, you can come up with some more complex combinations of two LFOs going at the same time, as one side multiplies the amplitude of the other side. Now you have something that sounds far less periodic than any normal combination of one or two LFO shapes. And again, this four quarter multiplier has two inputs, has own dedicated output with a level control. So that means you can put any signal through it to get this processing. And the LEDs show you which quadrant you're in. Positive signal times negative signal, positive times positive, negative times negative, negative times positive. So that's some interesting ways to combine the two LFOs running at the same time. However, there's ways of putting these in series with each other so one fires the other one. That's more typical, so let's go to that so you can see what's going on. And to do that, I'm going to go back to using the maximum or analog ORD output to put the two together. I'm going to stop them for now and explain what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the end of full, the end of cycle for the yellow side, and have that trigger the green side. The arrow points towards the trigger input right next to that manual trigger button. Then I'm going to take the end of full, the end of the green side, and have that trigger, again the input arrow, the yellow side. Now you have one firing after the other, and they can have radically different shapes, durations, etc. And again, you have antenna inverters to decide the contribution of each half. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and look at that composite output on our blue channel. Just so you can see how they're being put together. I've attenuated the green side, that's why it's just a small spike there. I removed the prior patch for clarity because I want to show you one more mode, and that's getting back to this quadrature mode we talked about earlier, where again the two envelopes overlap. The yellow rises, when it's done, it triggers the green to rise. When the green sun rising, it triggers the yellow to fall. When the yellow's done falling, it triggers the green to fall. 
When you want to use these as a quadrature LFO, you need to put the green side into sustain mode, and then you put the yellow side into LFO mode. I'll flip the quadrature switch. And now you see where the two envelopes are offset from each other. And right now I'm currently using the max of the two outputs. Now this does create a slightly more complex LFO shape on its own, but the idea of quadrature is more interesting when you patch it to two different parameters because you get overlapping LFO periods controlling your two parameters. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my filter cutoff to the bipolar version of the yellow side. We'll put my cutoff. Then take the green's unipolar output, I can grab a copy right here from data, and put it to resonance. So yellow, the filter cutoff rises, then green, the filter's resonance rises, then yellow, the filter's cutoff falls, and then green, the filter's resonance falls. Let me play around with your times a little bit. Play around with the shapes as well. That's another way that the fleece ray becomes a very complex modulation generator rather than just a pair of function generators. 